and welcome. I'm James Milan and this is Town Meeting Matters, a brief series that uh, we are doing to prepare town meeting members for the extraordinary session they are uh, due to have upcoming on June 15th. Joining us right now, Adam Chapdelaine, our town manager and a frequent guest on ACMI. Adam, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Good to see you. Um, we are interested in getting, we're getting to talk to several different uh, folks who have their fingerprints all over uh, the work of uh, the budget that is going to be presented or most of the budgetary items that are going to be presented on the 15th. Um, but of course, you are the person who kind of uh, is aware of both the nitty gritty details, I'm sure, and also the larger picture. What we're looking for, at least at the outset of this conversation, is that a sense of that larger picture. So from your own perspective, kind of give us as, as, as concisely as you can, um, a sense of you know, where we are at and as we go into this town meeting. So from a budgetary perspective, uh, I'm assuming that's what you, uh, if, 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 it's, if it's where we're at from the pandemic, I'm not sure how much I can, <laughs> I can, I can help. Let's, you're, uh, you're right, let's stick with the budget. But from a budgetary perspective, uh, we, we, we know some things, and admittedly, there's a lot that we don't yet know. And what we know is what our own property tax uh, collections are likely to be, I think we have a very good sense of projecting what our non-tax receipts will be over the next year. Things we collect like motor vehicle excise, motor, uh, hotel, motel, meals, uh, building permits, and then other smaller collections we do locally. We know what our own free cash allocation is. That's our unencumbered money that we use a percentage of for operating funds every year. What we really don't know yet is what state aid will look like. We do know that state revenues for next year are projected to be very, very seriously impacted by the pandemic. We've heard numbers as high as 25% reductions in state revenue for fiscal year 21, which the same as us starts on July 1st. So there's, there's a lot of, um, there's still a lot of questions as opposed to answers out there in that regard. Uh, we've heard from the various groups that advise the state legislature and the governor, Mass Taxpayers Foundation, uh, Beacon Hill Institute, other groups, and they, they, again, they're in that range, 15, 20, 25% reductions in state revenue. Now, we get a significant portion of our revenue from state aid. Not, not, not a majority. Uh, it's probably- Yeah, what, what is that, you know, roughly speaking, in normal circumstances, what is that? I believe it's about 17% of our budget. So an important piece, but not the majority piece. So what we are assuming for the FY21 budget that will be presented at the town meeting is that state aid across the board, both chapter 70, which is education aid, and UGA, which is called, it's called UGA, but it is unrestricted general government aid, uh, will be cut by a collective 15%. Uh, that's a number that, you know, I've talked with my colleagues and other communities, spoken with the MMA. It's hard for anybody, uh, even our own legislators, to really know what state aid will be cut, but where we're using that number of 15% as sort of a really middle of the road. I don't think it's overly conservative, but I also don't believe it's wishful thinking. Uh, okay, and excuse me for the interrupting, but just to clarify quickly, you said that one of the sources uh, that you were kind of consulting in order to come up with this is the MMA. What is that again? Oh, I'm sorry, the, the Massachusetts Municipal Association. Okay, so, so they, other, they, other town managers basically? or Mayors, managers, select board members, city councilors, finance committee members. Okay. It's a, a wide, sort of a, a big tent for local officials in Massachusetts. Okay, thanks, sorry for the interruption. No, no, that's a good question. I, sometimes I swim in acronym soup and it's good to be, <laughs> good to be clear. Uh, so, so the assumption is we're, we're, we're putting, we've put together a new FY21 budget assuming a 15% state aid cut. Now, we don't believe the state is going to adopt a budget to give us clarity on that figure before July 1st. In fact, from what we hear from the legislature, it's not likely that they'll adopt a budget before maybe August or September. They will likely adopt one twelfth budgets or one month budgets and until they have a better sense of what the economic recovery looks like. 
I think they're also waiting to see if there will be additional federal stimulus to help backfill state revenue. Because I, you know, rather than adopting the most draconian budget, I think they want to have a little more information before they do that. Mm -hmm. But again, we're making the assumption of a 15 percent state uh, state aid cut. Uh, what we what we know will be the case is we will have to come back in the fall, not only to address all the matters that won't be addressed now in this town meeting, but to likely make uh, modifications to the budget based on what state aid actually is. So our overarching goal here is to maintain the stability of town services and school services that were really the core tenet of the override that was passed last year, while not bringing any closer in time when the next override is projected to be. So assuming those state aid cuts of 15%, looking at our spending, and then looking at when we would need to look at an override again, again, we've tried to maintain core services, but not have an override any sooner than we were expecting. And that's, that's the balance that we've tried to bring to present the town meeting this year. Mm -hmm. I've got, I've got a, a question. I'm wondering, what is the impact, if any, of the fact that, as you said, you will not know any more than you know right now um, uh, about the amount of money coming from the state at the time that, the, that you, you have your uh, town meeting on the 15th, and one assumes that things will get passed and uh, you know approved um, as, as roughly as they are. Um, usually, I would think that, that that kind of sets the the numbers and the and the priorities for that next year. But you've said that more information is going to be coming in the ensuing months um, from the state, so that number may be significantly higher or lower than what you had assumed. Um, what is the provision for the decisions that you make on the 15th that, that can take into account the changes that could happen after that? So I think in uh, like a sort of a summary form, if we end up in the fall in a worse position than what we've projected, we'll have to take a step, step back, look at town spending, look at school spending, and look at reserves. And depending on how big the gap is, make decisions about how we want to close that gap. Uh, we still will, we're, we're not touching um, the money that we have in our long-term stabilization fund as part of the plan that will be presented to town meeting. So that could be a conversation we have. And there's also, there, there will be further spending we can look at within, uh, within budgets. So that will be what we do in that regard. If we do better, if there's federal stimulus or the rec recovery is faster than anybody's predicting, then we'll be able to, we'll have certainly a discussion about it, but I would imagine that we will try to put as much of that, uh, at that point, surplus away for a future rainy day as opposed to spending it immediately, given, given the general uncertainty about the future as it relates to the pandemic. Right, and that also seems consistent with the way that Arlington has approached its finances for as long as you know I've been uh, keeping tabs on, on such things. Well, clearly, yes, the surplus would be a, a lovely surprise, and we're, I think people are less concerned about what will happen uh, in that case, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it sounds then like the numbers will be firm in terms of the budget coming out of the, uh, of the meeting on the 15th, and then whatever adjustments you need to make in terms of drawing from other sources or other kinds of uh, changes to how you're spending that money uh, that needs any changes that need to be done because there's less money available you'll just deal with as 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 you can as we move into the fall and thereafter yeah that's fair and I guess maybe to say it another way because you know probably a better budget, way than the way I just no 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 building a budget in uncertain times is hard right but the uncertainty cuts both ways being overly draconian right now with the absence of information would be tough to describe to people as to why you're making those decisions. Being overly uh, optimistic in the absence of information would be hard to describe. So that's why we're, we're not really doing either. Um, I think we're being moderately conservative in the expense reductions that we've taken, understanding that it could get more severe. And if it's more severe, I think we know the areas that we'll look at to trim that cost. And that, so we're not, we're not going into the fall on a wing and a prayer, right? We're, we're going into the fall thinking we've made smart, prudent decisions given what we do know, and with a good idea 
of what we'll look to do if we do have to make further cuts. And yeah. I, I don't mean that that sounds more guarded maybe than it's intended to be. We have vacancies in departments across, um, across the town and we're gonna hold on to those vacancies for a little while rather than hiring new people that we might have to lay off depending on how things go. So we'll, we'll take a look at those vacancies and hold them so that if we do have to reduce more expenses, we can think about eliminating those vacancies. Right, and and I appreciate the fact that you might have you recognize that that might have sounded guarded, so you wanted to give some details. And I'll just remind our audience that in another conversation in this series, one with Al Tosti, uh, the chairman of our finance committee, he goes into uh, gives a number of examples of where those you know if cuts need to happen or if money if, if expenditures need to be reduced, like where and what the nature of those will be. So if you're interested, audience. Just check out the Altosti interview and you can get more information. In the interest of, you know, making the most of your own time here, uh, Adam, let me ask you um, to, to, to now take a step back and directly address your audience in a sense in, in this particular case, which is town meeting members, um, perhaps veterans, but certainly those newer to town meeting. Um, obviously, the circumstances are unprecedented for all, one and all. Um, but what is it uh, that you, what message would you like to convey to town meeting members about how best to act between now and the 15th, as well as on that night? So the message the moderator is trying to send is, let's, let's have this session be as short as it can be while allowing for public dialogue so that we can maintain the operation of town government after July 1st. Uh, but safe, you know, but then come back in the fall for more hefty policy discussions, assuming the pandemic has, you know, will allow us to in terms of a gathering. So I think the message I would send further than that is that the moderator is also going to be very shortly asking for town meeting members to submit questions by email about the budgets and other financial matters that will be before them. And what we'll do is the moderator will decide who should answer those questions. I think he'll work with me on deciding whether it's me or department head or whoever it might uh, appropriately be. We'll then post those questions publicly for all town meeting members to see and we'll post the answers. So what we're trying to do, what we will be trying to do is mimic a floor debate over a time elapse over the course of the next few days. So that again, we're not trying to limit debate. We just, we don't want to have people in close proximity, even though it'll be outside and hopefully most people will have masks. Um, we, we don't want it to be any longer than it will need to be to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. Okay, great. Um, and we know that you guys are going to be tackling on the 15th, basically, purely fiscal issues. And, and so, and um, again, I would point people there in, you know, these four conversations that we're having as part of this series will provide all of this information. So we don't need to ask of it, all of it from you. Um, but the, do you foresee uh, at this point that there are any of the, the budgetary items that are gonna be coming up for discussion, be that the CPA or Minuteman or town, town budgets, et cetera, uh, do you foresee at this point that, that any of those are gonna be, uh, you know, tough, tough to work out, um, you know, clear sailing, somewhere in, uh, obviously somewhere in between probably, but uh, you know, anything that you need to alert folks to uh, in terms of just being a tougher issue to resolve? I don't know that I would say that I think there are tough issues to resolve as I view the current budgets. Uh, the capital plan has been well vetted by the capital planning committee and then the finance committee uh, and put forward. The CPA are only putting forward the things that they are deeming most urgent at this time and then planning to come back at a later date to ask for more. Um, most of the other articles, the Minuteman article uh, is for the operation of the Minuteman schools. Um, and then there's appropriations from various accounts, uh, miscellaneous articles that we're looking at. What I see as potentially being an item or a topic of controversy is the police budget, given uh, everything that we're discussing and facing in the nation right now. And I've received emails from some residents, uh, and I know the chief has received more, Chief Flaherty has received more, um, suggesting that we defund the police budget. And I understand what they're suggesting. I understand the concerns they're raising. And I'm at least going to prepare myself for somebody on town meeting floor or town meeting field this year 
to raise that uh, either as a substitute motion or ask questions in that regard. And my answer to that, though I'm still working through, I think, the details of the answer that I would give, is that I think there are very important discussions that we should be having about how the police department operates, uh, what it looks like, um, how it fits into maybe a more, you know, a mental health social work model. Um, I mean, I think the Arlington Police Department has been a leader in that regard. They've had social workers on staff for over five years, a nation, a nationally acclaimed uh, opiate out. Uh, opiate outreach and awareness campaign and program. So I think we've been doing a lot of the right things, but we need to talk about it more. And I, I don't believe that simply reducing the police department's budget today for the sake of reducing it will get any of us where we want to go. I think we have to be planful, thoughtful, and analytical and, and do the work to decide how we, if we don't want to be spending the money in a certain way in the police department budget, what should we be doing? And then where would we like to put those resources? You mentioned that um, that there will need to be a special town meeting in the fall to deal with all the issues that you can't deal with on the 15th. I'm wondering whether there are any uh, among those uh, that are going to be affected in terms of the Warren articles themselves, what they're looking for. Are there any that are so timely that they'll be affected just by being uh, just by being delayed until the fall? So, I mean, again, on the topic that is the topic we're all talking about now uh, related to race and policing, uh, there was the, the study article in regards to a civilian review board. And I think that had that been proposing the establishment of a civilian review board, the timeliness would have been problematic given what we're facing. But that article was asking for the study of putting together a civilian review board. Uh, so again, th that might be something that comes up at, on town meeting floor this year. Uh, but I, I think the time, timeliness is less critical because it was asking to study the matter. Um, outside of that, I may be mistaken, but I mean, I don't know that any, anybody who was advocating, whether it was a town department or a resident, likes that their matter is being delayed. Sure. But um, I, don't, I don't think there's anything jumping off the page to me uh, that's saying that we really should be taking care of it this, this spring and can't wait for the fall. And, and I say that because all of these things, no matter where you come down on them, they deserve robust discussion. Uh, they, I don't believe any of them should be rushed. So um, I think, you know, wait, waiting till we can all safely come back together, uh, or maybe even waiting until we've been able to work through some technological hurdles to see if we could all come together electronically in the fall and have a robust discussion one way or the other. I think all of these issues deserve more consideration and debate. Okay. And what Aside from the obvious uncertainty that the pandemic has kind of just superimposed on everything that we do, um, what are the de what will determine uh, at what date uh, you set that fa the, the the fall town meeting the special town meeting in the fall for? I think we'll watch health data. We'll watch health guidance from the state and our own local public health officials. I think we'll see what the state is doing in terms of their budget. We'll see what um, what's happening with a potential federal stimulus bill and see how those all work together, right? I mean, I, th I think if, if health data points to the middle of October, but there's no new news from the state yet about budgets, maybe we wait a couple weeks, right? But if we get clarity from the federal and state government in early September, and health data points to waiting another couple of weeks, then I think we wait a couple of weeks, right? So I, I think we have to see how those, mm -hmm. how, how those interacting variables come together. Right, a lot of different threads that have to kind of get, get, get locked in, in place. Yeah. Um, so just very quickly, any, um, pre, anything that merits a preview uh, that again has been, is being deferred to the fall, anything that, that kind of stands out for you is, is something that deserves mention even right now, or should we just move on? I, well, so I think we, we are going to have, hopefully over the summer, we'll find the right way to have discussions about police accountability and uh, the Civilian Review Board or the Chief's, um, the chief's commi uh, Residence Commission that she's trying to put together, the Residence Advisory Committee. Um, I think those are things that we are, you know, whether or not they're on town meeting floor, we need to keep discussing. Um, I think our plan is to continue to discuss zoning. I know the planning department, even in the midst of all this, has been working hard to put out resident engagement um, opportunities and surveys about zoning. 
So I think we'll keep talking about those things. And then I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, so I don't want to insult anybody, uh, but no, nothing else outside of those two jump to mind as just being burning things mm -hmm. that we need to address. Um, but I think we will, again, we will we'll be talking about those things. It might be over Zoom, like you and I are talking right now, but I think we'll be talking about those matters before they're taken up. And hopefully we can try to, you know, I, solving some of these problems is much harder than it may seem, but um, hopefully we can, we can start to move the dialogue forward as we, you know, over the next couple summer months. Mm -hmm. And you may think that I've already asked you my toughest questions, but um, uh, here's one. Um, what signs of hope <laughs> are there out there? Uh, what, what uh, you know, a, 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 any sun you can introduce into, you know, what are, you know, of course, practical and, um, and thoughtful uh, reactions and responses to the circumstances, but nonetheless, tough stuff on the whole. Yeah, um, yeah. Any, I mean, any, any things you're optimistic about at, the, at, at this time? So, you know, may, may, this may sound naive, it may be naive, but I, I am really optimistic that now is the time for us to really make progress on race in this country. I, I don't know what the culmination of factors are that have kept the national attention on this. I mean, I have my suspicions that it is uh, a lot of people are not in school, there's a good number of people not at work, the just visceral brutality of what happened to George Floyd, I think the combination of those things have captured the attention of a broader audience, right? It's sad but true that black and brown people in this country have been killed before by law enforcement, maybe not in the same manner, but in as brutal a manner as George Floyd was, and it didn't ignite the same reaction. But now that the reaction is ignited, I, 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 I have hope. I, I think there is hope that we can make progress on this, not just as Arlington, as a country, I think that people that hadn't paid any attention to this before, even some of my own friends I'm seeing are paying attention to these issues in a way that they've never paid attention to them before. So I, I have hope in that regard. And I think in Arlington, I have hope that we have what are now thousands of people standing out on Mass Ave on a nightly basis looking for change. And I have hope because we have a select board and we have a police chief and we've, we have a fire chief, we have officers within the police department and more who agree that we need to make change. So I, I think we are well aligned in this community to make the changes that we need to make. It's not gonna be easy. Some of the discussions are gonna be very hard and the people having those discussions might not agree on every point. Um, but if it, was, if it was easy, it wouldn't be worth doing. And I think that I do believe um, that we have a sun shining down on us in this moment to make changes that are just so long overdue in this country. So I, in that regard, I have a lot of hope. Well, if that's naivete, um, it's a mighty clear-eyed version of it. So let's let it, let us hope you're onto something there. Um, anything we've missed, Adam? Uh, the only thing I would add that I'm sure everybody else that you're interviewing for this will add in some shape or form is, um, we are trying to conduct this town meeting in as safe a manner as possible from a public health point of view. Uh, we will be protecting the workers checking people in as well as the people checking in with plexi shields. Uh, we'll be asking everyone to wear a mask. If you're not gonna wear a mask, we'll be asking you to sit in a special non-mask wearing section, whether it be by your choice or your own health that doesn't allow you to wear a mask. Um, we'll be providing hand sanitization. We'll be allowing for social distancing. We're gonna really maximize under the guidance of the Health and Human Services Department, conducting this town meeting in as safe a, pos a safe manner as possible. So um, I, it, that said, I'll understand some people won't want to come. And I, that, that's the, situ if the situation being what it is, that's unfortunate, but um, I want to assure everybody we are paying a lot of attention to conducting this as safely as possible. You know, I got to ask you one small question uh, just uh, on this topic to, before, before we finish, and that is, one of the challenges I think all of us have realized, and I, because I have an octogenarian mother living with me and I take her around to a certain degree, so bathroom facilities and access there too uh, can be you know, quite challenging when you're out um, in the world these days. Uh, does town meeting have a, a plan for that? 
Yeah, so there are bathroom facilities available at the concession stand that are out on the field, out on Pierce Field. So we will be making sure that those are fully uh, operational. And we'll also have a custodial detail to sanitize them after use so that we can have them available for people to use, but also make sure that they can use them safely. Okay. Well, I'm sure I could have picked a more suitable topic with which to, uh, to end our conversation. But um, again, appreciate all the information and, and your time. And of course. best of luck on the 15th and thereafter. Thank you very much. All right. I've been talking to Adam Chapdelaine, our town manager. I'm James Milan. This is Town Meeting Matters. Thanks for joining us.